time, it's uh, my pleasure to introduce Kent Weiser, the Director of Athletics here at Emporia State. Very good. Thank you, Don, and thank you all for being here today as we begin a new and exciting era in Emporia State men's basketball. Three weeks ago today, head coach David Moe announced his intention to step down as head coach to devote more of his time and energy to his growing family. I'd like to once again thank Coach Moe for his 10 years of service and leadership to Hornet basketball. Throughout the search for a new head coach, I greatly appreciated the help and advice of our two associate athletics directors, Shane Shively and Carmen Leeds. Together we worked through, worked through 140 applicants and made and received countless calls concerning the many qualified candidates. As we narrowed the search, a, can a candidate began to stand out and set himself apart from the field. He's a man who is very well known and respected throughout the basketball coaching profession. He's a man known for his integrity, his skill as a recruiter, and his dedication and passion as a teacher. He's played basketball at the highest levels, which I believe will give him a unique opportunity and advantage teaching young men about how to reach their potential in basketball, in education, and in life. He's here today with his wife, Danielle, daughters Aubrey, Amber, and Alessandra, and sons Garen and Gage. I am very proud to introduce the head basketball coach of Emporia State University, Sean Vandiver. taking this in right now because it's an honor and a privilege to be standing in front of you as the next head coach of Emporia State men's basketball. Uh, first, I'd like to thank uh, Kent Weiser and Dr. Uh, Lane for having me here, being a part of this family. Uh, secondly, I'd like to thank my wife and my kids, Danielle, Aubrey, Amber, Garen, Alessandra, and Gagey. Without you guys, there's no me. And I'd like to thank my mother and father for bringing me into this world and giving me this great opportunity. I have some extended family here. I have my sister in the back, my mother, my nephew and nieces. Made the long trek up here from Newton. I appreciate you for coming. I love you. And uh, without you also, there is no me. Uh, the biggest thing I want to address is the fact that starting today, we're going to bring in the young men that will make this community proud, not only on the floor, but in the classroom, and especially amongst the people of Emporia. I would like to also thank Coach David Moe because he's been a great friend of mine, a great mentor at times, and just a great human being. And I know that his next journey in life will be successful no matter what he wants to do. Now, I won't be long, but I have to bring out the paper like everyone and just thank a couple people to make sure. Um, you know, I really want to thank uh, Coach David Farrar, who recruited me and coached me and brought me to Hutchinson, Kansas. And you have to understand something. The state of Kansas means much more to me than just an uh, opportunity to be your next head coach. The state of Kansas brought me my wife. My first child was born in Hutchinson, and we won a National Junior College title in Hutchinson. So my goals are the same, is to bring my family here and connect with you, my extended family, and someday bring you a national championship, because it's a great feeling. Uh, Steve McLean, who's the assistant coach on that team, and gave me my first head coaching position at the University of Wyoming, I'd like to thank him. Dan Dockage who hired me at Bowling Green and, and taught me so much. Uh, Heath Schroyer, who, uh, who stayed with me through the hard times at Wyoming and kept me on his staff. Right now, the biggest thing I, I look forward to is going out and being an ambassador, a representative of Emporia State and the community of Emporia, Kansas. Right now, life is good. 
it's good to be six feet over and not under. <laughs> and uh, if anyone has any questions, I'll be willing to field them. What was it about his morning statement? Did you want to come here and be part of this program? Uh, when Coach Mo left the University of Colorado, and that's where I, I played and graduated from, uh, he had nothing but great things to say about Emporia State, uh, Kent, uh, the president. He just raved on and on about the opportunity he had because right now I was in the same situation he was in. Long time assistant coach, want to take a shot at running your own program, and he just had nothing but great things to say. And then this past year I worked with Jeff Linder, who also worked here on Coach Moe's staff. Uh, he signed and recruited uh, my assistant coach, Wesley Book, and he had nothing but great things to say. Uh, sometimes in this business, you get caught up with just trying to be the next head coach and not look at everything that a job entitles, the, the pros and cons of it. And when they, you know, over the years just broke down everything good about Emporia, I, I knew it was right for me. Specifically, what did they say was right about Emporia? Well, uh, first they said the people, great community, love basketball, love to be behind their all their sports programs. Uh, secondly, the athletic department, they had nothing but great things to say about uh, Mr. Weiser and President Lane, about the support, the, the resources. And if you didn't have it, they'll go to the ends of the earth to try to give you what you needed. And that's the, that's the great thing about any good job is the support. And they just said, that's what it takes. It's not a job that you're just gonna show up and just say, I'm the head coach. You have to get after it. You have to grind. You have to work. And I like working. I like grinding. Uh, in my mind, there's nothing like going out and going into young men's homes like Michael Tyler right there and, and recruiting them and connecting with them and convincing them to come all the way out to Emporia, Kansas and see them have success, see them graduate and win. Uh, it's, it's nothing like it. You know, the thing I want to say to all the former players and the current players, uh, especially the former players, thank you. You guys have laid down the foundation here that I'm going to live up to those standards and hopefully take them higher. You know, and to the current players, you guys are with me. We're, we're going to work. We're going to get after it and, uh, you know, win some games and try to bring the title. Last year, seeing one pretty senior lady, so was that kind of <laughs> uh, I, I don't know about a mixed blessings. Uh, uh, this past year, I, uh, I, I walked into Boise State and we had six seniors, and we ended up winning 22 games. Uh, would I like to have some players, more players? Yeah, but that's the hand that was dealt. Right now, the thing I have to do is get with Coach Book. We have to analyze the prospects that are out there that will not only help me win games, but also be uh, great student athletes, graduate. You know, and as a head coach, you want to go to bed at night and you don't want your phone ringing at 2.30 in the morning. Good things never happen. So it's our job to go out and get young men that are going to be, you know, quality human beings, not only good players. So uh, to answer your question, it is a mixed blessing, but at the same time, it's a challenge I'm ready to take. Do you have areas of the country where you have particular recruiting connections, or what's kind of going to be your strategy in use of them? Well, what, what pointed me to this job is I have great connections in the state of Kansas, especially in the junior college ranks, in the Midwest, in the high school ranks in Illinois and Wisconsin. Uh, I have some international ties playing 10 years of pro ball in Italy and Spain. So I, I think those are my strengths where I can go out and reach young men that uh, have, uh, that are trying to walk in my footsteps. I mean, I'll be honest, you, you know, I, I came to Hutchinson, Kansas from Romeoville, Illinois, and I uh, didn't know what I was getting into, you know. Uh, ripped up my knee my freshman year, red-shirted, my uh, redshirt freshman year, I played, we won a national title, went to the University of Colorado, had a great three-year run, was a first-round draft choice in the NBA, and even though I didn't have the type of NBA career I, I dreamed of, I went on and played 
10 years overseas. So when you walk into a young man's house and say, I want to help you establish your goals and dreams in life, I could say, I've walked the walk, I've talked the talk. And at the end of the day, my biggest accomplishments was, you know, getting married, having children, and graduating from college. The biggest thing these young men have to understand is sooner or later, the air is going to go out of your playing career. If not, Jordan and Wilt and all the greats will still be playing. So you have to be ready to move on to the next step in life. And I think I connect with a lot of these young men. How do you feel about high school players? Let's say your program gets established and you don't have to go out and replace eight seniors one year. And you move them along. Uh, you see them as being a part of your program? Uh, most definitely. You, you have to have a, a, a good mix. It can't just be all junior college transfers or D1 transfers or D2 transfers. You have to go out and um, recruit high school kids. And it's my job to sell them that Emporia State's the right place to be at. Uh, they're, they're, you know, I understand. Growing up, everyone wants to go play Division One basketball, but it's my job to, to show them that Emporia State's the right place for them. And high school kids are definitely on my radar. And uh, I definitely, you have to have a good mix. You know, in, in any good company, organization, university, you have to have a good mix of student athletes and personnel that can execute your game plan or your agenda and help you either earn profits or win games. Do we have any other questions right now? Not, thank you very much. Congratulations, Coach. Good job, man. Good job.